Welcome back to Spilling the Tea with Dr. Hendrix and Gabriel D and Lava Lee. You already know, the trio is back. Today we're going to be discussing a topic we haven't talked about before, and yes. it's kind of an interesting question. Yes, you told me about it, and I really wanted to learn more about this topic. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, very interesting. We're going to be discussing how recently there's been some evidence that men have plastic in their testicles, oh, which is quite alarming. Yeah. And we're going to discuss what that means. Absolutely. I have a few questions for you so you can give us some knowledge and answers. Yeah, absolutely. So this all started because a group of scientists were concerned about the rising level of microplastics that were they were finding in patients' bloodstreams and various tissues around the body. So they decided to have some patients uh, survey their testicular tissue wow. to see how much plastic was found. And what they found is 100% of the samples taken found a dramatically high amount of microplastics and plastics within the tissue. Wow. And while we don't exactly know what this means and if it could be a larger concern or something we should be um, more proactively screening patients for or educating people about, what we do know is there is some damaging effects of plastic in the body. And so we wanna discuss those and how this could be affecting men out there. Yeah, that is very alarming. It's crazy to think that there are all those microplastics inside of our body, something that we we'll never think of. What's so concerning is this really highlights the pervasive nature of plastic pollution mm -hmm. and how it can affect even the most protected areas of our body. Right. And so what are those microplastics? So microplastics are the tiny microscopic or small sized plastics. Typically, they need to be less than five millimeters in size to be considered a microplastic. Very tiny. Yeah, and they originate from a variety of plastic sources. So you want to think about larger plastics that are degrading, and so they're going to be releasing microplastics. You want to think of those tiny beads that you often find in personal hygiene products like face wash, some toothpaste, some uh, body lotions mm -hmm. or cleansers. And then you also want to consider the fibers from plastic materials and fabrics. It can come from everywhere. Pretty much. Wow. And again, microplastics are really pervasive in the environment. They're found in the soil. They're found in the ocean ocean and rivers and any bodies of water, they're actually so small they can even be found in the air that we breathe. So it's very hard oh. to avoid them. And the problem is, is they actually will accumulate in our bodies or our bloodstream or various tissues and thus causing many problems for animals and humans. The problem is we don't know exactly what those problems are. We do have some ideas and we're going to get into that in this conversation. But the major issue is how much effort are we putting into finding out what this actually means for us, especially as we continue to use more and more plastic in our lives and it becomes more and more a part of the earth around us. Yeah, you think those studies should be priority, right? Because those microplastics are everywhere and everyone is vulnerable to them. Right. And the major issue is how long have we been sort of lied to right. about yes. the safety of plastic if there is clinical evidence mm -hmm. that it's causing problems? And what we do think is there's no immediate concern, right? We don't think it's causing acute problems. Mm -hmm. It's more so these long term issues as those plastics collect in our body. Are they creating an increase in cancer? Are they causing problems yeah. with our hormones? Are they creating chronic diseases for us? Uh, that could have been avoidable. And so we don't exactly know, but we're going to get into some of the information we do know. Speaking of information that we do know, why does finding microplastics in our testicles matter? What we do know about these microplastics is they contain some harmful chemicals, one being BPA, another being phthalates, which can actually disrupt our endocrine system. And this has been proven. The problem with that is that our hormones, a part of our endocrine system, are very important with our development, our growth, as well as our sexual function, our wow. desire, and many other issues uh, that can happen if our hormones are uh, unstable, especially as we're developing. And so do we know how microplastics are impacting our testicular function? So we know that these microplastics can be impacting the function of the cells in our testicles that are responsible for creating testosterone and other important hormones. And because we know the plastic is also inflammatory, right. it can actually lead to the damage and destruction of these cells. Wow ultimately causing major hormonal imbalances or developmental problems, especially for those going through puberty that need the testosterone the most. Wow, that's crazy. There's also some concern that as we are seeing time go forward, we're noticing men are starting to have a decrease in their testosterone earlier in their lives, like in their 20s, 30s, 40s. We also see fertility issues becoming a problem for much younger men, and this is quite new. And so we think there could be a correlation oh by the microplastics in our testicles affecting our ability to produce that testosterone and to remain fertile as we should. 
Absolutely. I feel like we are using more plastic now than ever than before. Ever. Yeah, it's almost inescapable. And that's yeah. what it will get to later is how do you avoid uh -huh. worsening this issue? Is there anything we can do? And we'll certainly get to that, but it's not looking good. If microplastics are damaging testosterone production, what would this look like? So reduced testosterone production due to microplastic uh, inflammation or damage to those cells is going to look like a similar trajectory of those that have low testosterone. So you're going to have fatigue, you're going to have a trouble gaining lean muscle mass, you're going to have difficulty losing body fat, you're going to have a poor libido or difficulty with your sex drive or erections, uh, motivation may be an issue, concentration could be an issue, and some patients will have just a couple of those symptoms, others will have all of them, but really it's going to mimic the symptoms of low testosterone. And it's interesting because you won't know if it's being caused by microplastics. Right. And that's what a lot of my patients ask is, you know, hey, what could be causing my testosterone issue? And the problem is, is we don't really right. know. Is it the chicken or the egg? Right. Is it sleep issues? Mm -hmm. Is it anxiety and stress? Is it the current environment we live? Is it the plastic consumption? It could, could be, be all of them. So, yeah, it could be so many different things. Uh, so it's hard to say, unfortunately, um, especially as we compound more and more issues that could be contributing to that hormone imbalance. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and then we really worry about the long-term effects of having low testosterone. Mm -hmm. While it's important to have energy and a high sex drive and all these things, having low testosterone for a prolonged period of time is going to put you at increased risk for osteoporosis or weakening of the wow. bones as we age, an increase in cardiovascular disease. It can also increase your risk for diabetes or other metabolic disorders. So that prolonged impact of having low testosterone is much more damaging than the short-term, you know, decrease in energy or a poor libido. It becomes a snowball effect. Exactly. And so if someone has symptoms of low testosterone, what should they do? So if men out there are experiencing symptoms of low testosterone or they're not quite sure, it's always important to talk to your medical provider, consider getting screened. If you don't have a medical provider available to you, we're happy to help at HendrixHealth.com. We're actually running a special this summer, $150 for a full testosterone screen, including all the essential biomarkers that could be contributing to how you feel. So we're gonna put a link in the description of this video for those patients that need some assistance there. Happy to help you, would love to meet you. But really just making sure you talk to your doctor, explain your symptoms and concerns so they're able to screen you properly and get you on treatment so you can prevent these you know, temporary or short-term symptoms from becoming more yes. long-term effects. Yes, it's reversible. Exactly. Can you explain a little bit how microplastics get into our testicles? Yeah, so microplastics are going to enter the bloodstream through three main mechanisms. Wow. So number one, ingestion. You're going to eat it. So mm. those microplastics could be on plastic utensils or other types of food handling you know, equipment right. that melt or bleed into your food, then you ingest it. Mm -hmm. Or you may eat an animal that has accumulated plastics, right. such as fish, poultry, beef. Another way would be inhalation. So as I mentioned, microplastics are so small, they can actually be Atmosphere. in the air that we breathe. And mm -hmm. so that's another way they're entering. And then finally, absorption through the skin, which is really crazy to me, because I would assume my skin can protect Protects, me yes. from microplastics, but believe it or not, they can actually go through the skin barrier and be absorbed into your bloodstream that way. That is crazy to me. Yeah, and what's even more crazy is there's two areas of our body that are extremely protected from pathogens or damage that could come across the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. One being the brain, right. so there's a blood-brain barrier, and then your testicles, the blood-testes barrier. Wow. So both of these mechanisms in our body are built to maintain and protect the brain, a very important area, right. and the testes to ensure your sperm is fertile and able to replicate and reproduce for the maintenance of your <laughs> longevity and your offspring. But the problem is, is these plastics are able to pass through that is crazy. those very intensive barriers, which is concerning. They are able to bleed in and move in through the barrier and settle into the testicles, which then causes damage to our sperm production and our testosterone production. Because obviously they're supposed to be our most protective organs of our bodies. Right. We're really meant to be on this planet to live. Right. So we need the brain <laughs> and then to reproduce. Yes. So we need our sperm. And so that's why our body puts so much energy and effort into protecting those areas and making it more concerning that plastic is able to infiltrate yeah. their way through making their way through we'll stop this <laughs> well <laughs> we'll try to stop this uh, it's not looking good <laughs> oh. we can at least try and teach our viewers right yeah, and that's actually the next question yes which is how can we reduce our consumption of microplastics absolutely and so you want to kind of target the areas that we're able to actually change so inhalation there's nothing you can do about right. the breathing that you're mm -hmm. doing right now if there's microplastics there 
Not much you can do. In regards to skin absorption, maybe avoid any type of hygiene product that has those plastic beads, which look really cool. And mm -hmm. I bought so many of those things, especially <laughs> when I was younger, thinking that they were going to help, you know, scrub harder or yeah. do a better job cleaning. Avoid any of those types of, of uh, products because we know that that can be an issue. And then finally, to consumption. So if you notice you use a lot of plastic material in your cooking, if you use a lot of straws, if you use a lot of plastic cups, try to avoid those if you can. This is not something you're going to be able to do yes. completely. I try my best. You try your mm -hmm. best. And don't put too much pressure on yourself. At the end of the day, we still don't know exactly how damaging the plastic consumption is on the long term and overall but we do know if we can possibly avoid reduce, it we should and so yeah. it's also good for the environment in the sense that it's going to reduce the plastic waste that takes forever to discard mm -hmm. and degrade over time so just try to reduce your consumption where you can and don't stress about it too much there's not too much you can do uh, but maybe make this a priority for you in your local community. What are your local leaders? What are your state leaders? What are your federal leaders doing to try and make sure you're staying healthy, the people around you are healthy? And maybe you can use that information to better determine who should be elected into those positions. Oh, beautiful words. Now, do what we can. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of people, they say it's costly to use other products that are not plastic. But sometimes the difference is not that big. It's, they're basically the same thing. It's exactly. just a matter of changing your habits and changing what you use. Yeah. We used to use a lot of bottled of waters and we said, oh, it's so hard not to use bottled of waters. Yeah. That was our goal for 2024, not use bottled of the waters at all. And we completed that. Yeah. We're, we are making small moves. We're trying to do better. Yeah, exactly. So what are some thoughts that come to your mind in ways that you can reduce your plastic consumption? What are some ways that we can or other listeners or watchers yes. of this video can try to improve or reduce their plastic consumption? We're so glad we were able to have this discussion with you because I do think it's really important as we continue to move into the future and we will probably continue to use plastic but being mindful and yes. also being aware that there are some things that may be going on with our body in the environment that we may have more of a hold on especially if we can keep those elected officials accountable and make sure that they're doing the best to keep us all healthy but what other topics would you like to hear us talk about please we'd love to hear from you we love to hear the recommendations and if you haven't yet please subscribe to our channel like this video share if you want comment drop a pin all those things because we look forward to seeing you next week and we want to be able to spread the word to other listeners and viewers out there. So until then, we see will you see you next time. time. Bye. <laughs> so we do my... La, 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 la. If my... My... my, 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 my. Yeah, so microplastics are going to enter the bloodstream... La, 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 la.